right, here I am to talk about kind of coming full circle in a way. This palette was released in 2010, the Urban Decay Original Naked Palette. This was the year my first YouTube videos went live. And now, nine years later, they discontinued the Urban Decay Original Naked Palette and launched, I guess it's more of a relaunch. No, this is a whole new palette. The Urban Decay Naked Reloaded. So let's talk about this guy, pros, the cons, and whether or not I recommend it and how it compares to a couple of other palettes. I missed all the buzz on this. Maybe there was a lot, but it totally went over my head and I really didn't know anything about this until a couple of days before it showed up on my doorstep from the PR company. So thank you PR company for sending me this. Um, so here we have the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded palette. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It's the same as all the other nakeds in that it does have 12 shades. The packaging is totally redone. Just to compare, here's the original with the um, kind of cardboard packaging, velvet, uh, flocked packaging, basically very similar to the subsequent Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes. This one is smaller, slimmer, sleeker, I should say, quilted padded top, which I really actually like. I think it's easy to wipe down if you're into keeping your makeup clean. I have been told these are transparent or translucent orchids in here. And then the naked reloaded is embossed, slightly raised and in gold. So there you have it, that's what the back looks like. The outermost pans are the biggest, they're 1.4 grams or 0.049 ounces. And then the next two in from that are a teeny bit smaller, they're 1.3 ounces or 0.04, 1.3 grams I should say, or 0.045 ounces. And then the rest of the eight pans in the center are all 1.1 grams or 0.038 ounces. Just for comparison, the original palette, I'm checking my notes, all the pans were the same size and they were all 1.3 grams. Um, their reasoning for making the outer pans larger are they feel like these are the four most used shades. People complain they hit pan on the most used shades in the other palettes, so they're trying to give you a little more of what you generally use on an everyday basis, so I like that they listened. Um, according to Urban Decay, there are three textures in the palette. There are matte, metallics, and micro shimmers. For matte, there are five, they're saying there are five shades. For matte, we have Bribe, which is like an ivory shade. Then we have Retro, Bucked, Boundaries, and Blur. Then the metallics they're saying are the Barely Baked, Burn, and Distilled. And then for um, the micro shimmers, we have Angel Fire, Reputation, and Dreamweaver. I'm gonna show you a quick swatch on my arm of all 12 shades, and I wanna walk you through kind of my thoughts on them. So first we have Bribe, which is just basically an ivory matte shade. It is very pigmented. There is a, they say there's a sheen. I'm, I mean, in certain lights, yes, but once you start blending it out, very, very subtle sheen. Next we have Barely Baked, which is a very soft, gold, yellow gold, um, very sheer, definitely for a, a light wash of color would be very nice. That's one of the uh, metallics. Then we have Angel Fire, that is one of the micro shimmers. I was very excited when I first saw this shade and probably the most disappointed with this shade as well. Um, once you start actually putting it on your skin with a brush or your finger, it just doesn't come off as pigmented as when you swatch it initially. Um, I really wanted more payoff with this one because for me, this would be an everyday lid shade, very comparable to maybe Sin um, from the original palette or, well, actually that's about it. Next we have Retro, which is also described as a matte. If you have seen the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette, this one should look very familiar. We'll talk about that later. Next we have Reputation, another one of the micro shimmers. Very beautiful when swatched. Um, it pulls on me very warm. I don't even know how I would describe this color. Sort of a bronzy, rusty pink. Then we have Burn, another of the metallics, and um, more of a bronze, like a true, I'd say bronze shade. Very pretty. Does not um, swatch on me like how it looks in the pan. There's a little bit of a difference. Endgame is the darkest shade. In the palette, it is a matte, it is a dark, pretty much neutral brown on me. I feel like it pulls a little cool toned, but that is the darkest shade in the palette. There is no black. Then we have Dreamweaver, another one of the micro shimmers. Um, when swatched, there's, it's very gritty to the touch. It's a little bit dusty. Um, 
again, I feel like there, I'm another, I'm very, I will say this, I am disappointed in the um, micro shimmers, except for Reputation comes out nicely, but um, the other two, Angel Fire and Dreamweaver here, uh, just don't come out with the payoff that I was hoping to. But this, again, in the pan to me, looks like a silvery color, but when swatched, it's a warm brown. It's, it's pretty, but it's not what I expected. Then we have Distilled, which is a metallic, and it's one of my favorite shades. Um, I feel like this is something I could easily wear all over the lid or in the crease. It's just like a really nice warm brown. Then we have Bucked, another one of the mattes. And um, it's very soft and very easily blended. Um, I'm a, I feel like it could be more pigmented compared to other Urban Decay shadows that I've tried. And it's a, it's a brown, but it's a warmer brown than the original Buck. I feel like that one was more of a true neutral brown. Then we have Boundaries. Boundaries is, again, very, very warm. Uh, has some orange undertones to it. And then lastly, we have Blur, which, depending on your skin tone, would either be an all-over lid shade. On me, it's a nice transition. Um, it reminds me of a warmer version of Mac Omega. I should also say that this does not come with a brush. I read a lot of people are upset about that. If you're someone who will shell out $44 for a palette, which I should have said is how much this costs, then you're probably also that person that already has quite a few makeup brushes um, that you've purchased somewhere else and you probably already own all the other Urban Decay Naked palettes that came with a brush. And I never, I don't feel like those brushes are very good in the first place. So I don't know why everyone's getting upset over the lack of a brush. I, I'd rather not have a brush than have a crappy brush, which is what they generally give me. And I will say that I, I like the lack of extraneous packaging. It's very slim. I feel it's very travel friendly little package. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, obvious comparison. And I don't normally spot dupes. I'm not that that good, but the one shade that Urban Decay decides to put in here is their pop of color shade. I was like, wait a minute, hello. That is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry shade. So here they are lined up on top of each other. And as I started swatching these, I realized there are a lot of similarities. Not every color is going to line up, but I will show you, you know, you see them here swatched side by side. Comparing the two, the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette is much more pigmented. You get a lot more color payoff. To me, the big standout is comparing Angel Fire to Pearl from the um, Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. So they're not identical in shade, but they are the closest of the two light shimmer shades in the palette. Um, the Anastasia Beverly Hills one is the one on the bottom. When I was actually playing with these palettes in the last week, and I kept putting Angel Fire in the middle of my lid and I was just not getting the color payoff that I wanted. I actually dipped into the Anastasia palette and put Pearl in the middle instead. One, you know, When they're swatched like this, the differences are very obvious. When you take a brush and apply it to the eye and they're blended, the, different, the slight difference in color is not as obvious. Let's back it up a little bit. Urban Decay's PR is saying that the Naked Reloaded palette is the ultimate neutral palette for all ages, all genders, all skin types, all skin tones. I'm going to have to call a timeout on that statement because as you can see on me, this pulls very warm. This is not a, to me, true neutral. Like the original Urban Decay Naked was, that was why it was so groundbreaking. It was the first really truly big palette that was very much a neutral, tiny bit warm, um, there were some cool tones in there as well palette, whereas this one is just almost entirely like a toned down, I wouldn't say it's as bad as Naked Heat, but it is much warmer. As far as all skin tones, I mean, I can only speak for the one that I have. All these shades work on me. They're definitely workable, but um, I don't know as you get into the deeper skin tones, the lack of deeper shades on here, I don't know how much they will pop or how much you can really get out of this palette on a darker skin tone. I also haven't seen every single PR image, but I haven't seen it on anybody that looks over the age of 30. So, um, you know, like I said, I haven't, I haven't really studied the entire campaign to see who else they've put in their ads, but um, I haven't seen any older, like over 50, over 60, definitely not over 70 people wearing it. But um, I can tell you that just, I don't feel like there's any age inappropriate shades here. On that point, they're 100% correct. These are 
age appropriate um, for every age and stage of life, just depending on how you wear them. So now that we've talked about these shadows in the palette, why don't we see how I put this look together, actually following the instructions that Urban Decay had on their YouTube channel. So let's just go real quickly with a big fluffy brush. I'm going to put blur, which is the outermost on the right, and I'm doing it mostly on me. It's more of a transition shade, and then a little bit onto the lid as well. Then I'm going in with Retro, that peachy shade, with a fluffy brush, not quite as fluffy as the first one, and I'm gonna kind of basically go over just where I was with Blur, except I'm going to first place it down, and then I'm gonna really buff it out with a clean, fluffy brush that is discontinued, sorry. I'm also gonna take a bit of Retro and run it underneath the lash line. Then I'm going in with boundaries with that same Sigma E40 and going pretty much over where I put retro just to tone down the peach a little bit, I guess is how they were thinking on the Urban Decay website. I'm also bringing it a little bit into the outer corner. I'm deviating from their plan a little bit with a fluffy brush and going into Bribe, the lightest color on the left just to blend those edges a little bit. Then with the Sigma E25, the matte brown shade, Bucked, I'm going right into the socket line there just to give a little more definition. And I'm gonna bring it down a little bit into the outer corner and onto the lid a little bit. With that same brush, I'm gonna run it underneath my lash line. Going to blend this all out a little bit more with that discontinued fluffy brush. Now my favorite part, shimmers. I'm just gonna use my finger just like they did on the YouTube channel and I'm gonna take Reputation and press that across my lid. Not all the way into the inner corner, but pretty close. For a pop in the middle, I'm taking Angel Fire, the lightest shimmer shade, and I'm popping that into the middle of my lid with a finger. This does, for me, take several applications to get the level of shimmer that I would like. And I'll blend a little bit up there. And then with a pencil brush, I'm also gonna take Angel Fire and pop that into my inner corner. I haven't added eyeliner yet, but as you can see, these colors on me, probably also because I layered the peach shade, corally shade underneath, they do pull pretty warm orangey toned on me. If you want more of the brown to come out and less of the peach, I would suggest skipping the retro step, that first peachy coral shade, and just stick with, and actually skip boundaries as well, and just stick with bucked in the crease, um, and you will get a much more brown effect. In fact, let's layer on a little more bucked. Layering a little more bucked. And then to bring in a little more brown, I'm actually gonna take Endgame, which is that deep, chocolate brown and I'm gonna pop that in the outer corner too this is the darkest shade in the palette and here's my feeling on this it's $44 so this isn't 2010 however when there were very few palettes to choose from it's nine years later it's a long time in the makeup industry it's almost like computer years everything's moving fast a new collection is released monthly so there's a lot more competitors in this neutral palette market. Knowing that, and knowing that there are other options out there and that most of us probably already picked up the original Urban Decay Naked and you can still find it online in a lot of places, I don't think I would recommend this if you're looking for a standout everyday neutral palette. There are quite a few others that I would recommend. Um, obviously the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette would be one of them. A couple of the Milani palettes, um, Flower Beauty palettes. I'm trying to think of some more high-end. Uh, the, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam. My mind is coming to a blank, but I will think of a few more and put other more neutral, what I feel are more wearable and true neutral and more bang for your buck palettes out there. I don't think the quality of these shadows are holding up to what else is out there anymore. Ooh, I'm gonna get crucified for that. Um, but a lot has changed since 2010 and you can't just change the packaging and tell me that this is a naked palette. Not, it's just 
to me, it's not what I was expecting. I'm hoping at some point they come out with a naked bronze and keep that a little more completely neutral tone, no cools, no warms, or maybe a mix of both. But in the meantime, I would say if you already have the original naked palette or if you have the sultry palette, you can go ahead and skip this one. To me, it's just, I think we've gotten to the point in this industry where drugstore has really stepped it up. There are other brands out there offering a lot of options. And so to get really excited about a new launch, the product has really got to be outstanding across the board. And I cannot say that this is. In any event, that was my two cents on the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded palette. I'd love to hear yours. Please leave your comments below. I read them all and try to respond back to as many as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.